Pass it down. Okay. Five. Hold on. Ariana, put up Bob, uh, Bob, uh, Bob in the Plain View YouTube, please. And uh, I need to hear it when I come out. I need to see, check the sound. All right. Count it down. Five, four, three, two, one. Peace to everybody tuning in. My name is Brother Cephas. I'll be your teacher today. My reader today is Brother Johnny. Today's title of the class is, According to Your Works, Will You Be Judged? And the purpose of this class is because we have a lot of confusion as to what's going to happen, you know, in terms of, you know, what happens when we die. Some people believe we're going off to heaven. And one thing in the scriptures that we completely disregard is the fact that we will come across something called Judgment Day. When Judgment Day gets here, the Lord is going to be coming and he's going to be judging everybody according to your works. We're going to look through the Old Testament, also the New Testament, because the message has always been the same. It hasn't changed, brothers and sisters. When Jesus came and he died, of course we need to believe in him, but he did not take off the table what is required of you. So we're going to turn over to our first scripture, which is James chapter 2. Because, you know, we understand that we have to believe in Jesus. It's without Jesus dying for our sins and us believing in him, dying for our past sins, everything we do right now is for nothing. We all have nothing to look forward to but, you know, the ultimate death. But if we believe, James is going to elaborate on what it means to actually believe, you know. Because you can read where it says we're justified by faith. But there's a little more than that also. So James chapter 2. And when you get there, pick it up at verse 17, please. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. So it says, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. So if you want to say you have faith, faith without works, then you're not on a good footing with God, brothers and sisters. Because right here, James is making it plain and simple for you. Faith without works is dead. Go ahead. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And you know what? A lot of people today would want to do that for you. They have no problem saying, I believe in Jesus. They have no problem saying, I have faith in Jesus. However, they want to show that faith without exhibiting any form of faith. But let's see the mind state of James here. He said, because the average man, he will say, well, this is James talking to the average man. He says, show me that faith without that works. And that's the mindset of people today. But this is how James thinks though. Keep going. Show me that faith without that works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. And this is an apostle. This man has a book in the Bible. This man walked with Jesus himself. So, in his mindset was, I will show you my faith by my work. Now, you know, you can put it in modern day perspective. For example, a job I had in the past was a marketing job. And it didn't pay me enough money. I didn't have faith in that job to provide for my family. So, what did I do? I didn't work there anymore. I didn't have faith in it. job I do now, work what I'm working towards, I have faith in it. So, I'm going to work towards it. Just like when you have your job. You may be getting paid weekly or bi-weekly, but at the end of the day, you don't see that money in your paycheck. You don't see it in your bank account until payday. But what do you do? You work towards it. So your faith, you believe in the check coming your way, you work towards it every day. You clock in, even though you don't have the check yet, but you know it's coming. So that's what he's telling you right here, brothers and sisters. He says in uh, verse uh, 18, he says, And I will show thee my faith by my works. Go ahead. Thou believes that there is one God, Thou do as well. And you know what? You're off to a good start if you believe there's one God. Because there really is. And that's Jesus, of course. There's one God. But furthermore, the, de the devils also believe and tremble. So the devils believe also and they tremble. But yet we have people thinking it's all good and dandy. I have a personal relationship with Christ. Making it seem as if everybody can, you know, approach Christ any kind of way. They all have their own path to salvation. 
But in Jude chapter 1, it tells you about the common way to salvation. We're not going to go there, but I'll leave that for Homer for you. But it says right here, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and they tremble. Now the, de the devils, listen, they don't have an inheritance with God. They're not going to get, you know, to be in the kingdom. They're not going to, like, they believe there's one God just like us. But what's the difference between us and them? They have no works, you know. They're not building up works in order to get salvation because they, they know where their end result is. So just because you believe there is one God, it's not enough, brothers and sisters. Because, listen, the devils do too. And guess what? They tremble. They fear. So if they fear and they know they're not getting anything, guess what? You should fear also. That's, that's, that's later on. But verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man? What does he call him? He calls him a vain man. But it says, but wilt thou know, O vain man? What's that? That faith without works is dead. That faith without works is prosperous. Is dead. It says faith without works is dead, brothers and sisters. Keep going. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son up upon the altar? And it's and Abraham, he's a father of our faith. It says, was not Abraham our father justified by works? Of course he believed God. But it says he was justified by works. If you keep in mind, everything the Lord told Abraham, he did it. You can read it just as even in Genesis chapter 26. It said that he obeyed his law, his commandments, his statute, obeyed his voice. But right here we're seeing that it says, When I, Abraham, our father, justified by works, when he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar. This is a commandment. Now, we don't have this commandment personally, but there's other commandments that the Lord gives us. Now, do we follow those? Like we have to consider within ourselves. Do we follow the commandments given to us? We keep going. Seest thou how faith wrought with works, and by works was, was faith made perfect? So your faith will be made perfect by your works, just like with Noah. He was told, listen, I'm going to wipe out this earth. He could have been in the number of those who were wiped out too. He could have, but he believed in the word of God. He would believe what word he received from the Lord. And what did he do? He built that ark. And it says that he was a preacher of righteousness. So, of course, he was getting the word out. Listen, there's a flood coming. But no one listened. They didn't have, you know, the faith. And how did they exhibit their faith? But not display any form of work, brothers and sisters. But that mindset does not work. You need to have the works to stand behind your faith. So it says, see as thou how faith wrought with works, and by works was faith made perfect. Go ahead. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. So it says, and the scriptures was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God. So if Abraham believed God, guess what? He showed it through his works. Because if he didn't believe God, there would be no reason for him to leave the land of Ur for the land of Canaan. There would, like, if he didn't believe God, he would have walked before him and be thou perfect. These are the direct commandments that the Lord gave Abraham. And he fulfilled them. Verse 24. Hold on, keep going. And he was called a friend of God. And he was considered a friend of God. See, him exhibiting his faith through works, it was imputed unto him for righteousness. So if we want to be righteous and we want to, you know, be the sons of Abraham, guess what? Our works, working towards our faith also, it'll be imputed unto us for righteousness. Because this is, this is really clear as to what happened to Abraham. And his, and his seed in the kingdom is already, you know, sealed. When he resurrects, he's getting into the kingdom, brothers and sisters. So, hey, I'm going to follow these footsteps, these guidelines. His faith was made perfect through works. And that could happen to us also. Verse 24. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. It says, ye see then how that by works a man is justified. Now, Works alone can't justify you, because you can keep the law all day. But here's the here's the here's the truth right here. It says, "Ye see then that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only." You need both. And we're gonna realize we're also gonna learn today that when it's all said and done, 
we will also be judged according to our works. So let's go ahead and turn over to Romans chapter 3. Because I'm not doing away with faith. Because if Jesus didn't die for your sins, we'd have nothing to look forward to. But as you just read, without, without works, your faith is made void. Let's see if, if, if Paul has something different to say. Romans chapter 3, we'll pick it up at verse 23. When you get there, go ahead and read please. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's a very true statement. We've all sinned at one point of our lives. And because of that, listen, none of us are worthy of everlasting life. None of us have a chance. We've all come short of the glory of God. Go ahead. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So it says being justified freely. Like there's nothing we could have done to get this grace from the Lord. And ultimately what grace is, is he's giving you a time period to get your act together. Just like when you ain't make enough and you need an extension for your bill, instead of them cutting it out, lights out on the electricity, you ask for an extension. And then you have a grace period, which is normally 10 to 14 business days. But guess what? If you don't come up with the money, when that time period is over, listen, they're not going to have any more mercy on you. What's going to happen? They're going to cut off your lights. Now, the same thing applies to you dealing with the Lord. Because it says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Go ahead. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. For the past, future, and present. For the remission of sins that are past. So it says, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. So we have three components that we're going to realize we need. Because we saw that faith alone ain't going to justify you. You need faith and works. But this third component, grace, which the Lord freely gave us. Like I said, there's nothing we could have done to receive it. Now that we have it. And then we have the faith also. We need to believe in the fact that he died for only our has sins meaning once you come to the understanding that you were a sinner now you must change you got to bear fruit you got to exhibit some form of work to show that you change and we're going to learn what those fruits are today but in verse 25 it says when God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith if you don't believe in him he's not going to be that intercessor for you brothers and sisters and only his blood is worthy of being shed for you. But it says, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Go ahead. Through the forbearance of God. Go ahead. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. So it says, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just. And the justifying him which believeth in Jesus. So Jesus is going to be standing there. Because like I said, we've all sinned. And something has to be killed in order for sins to be forgiven. But the bloods and bulls and goats is not going to do it, brothers and sisters. That's why Jesus is our ultimate sacrifice. So when the Father is looking, guess what? He's going to see the blood of Jesus. And we are dead, buried in his baptism, correct? So the Father is going to see his blood shed for us. And he's going to be able to accept us. However, we have the faith that he died for our sins. But is that it? Jump down to verse 31. Because now it's talking about, you know, where do we have the boast? Is it in the law? No, we don't. Because if we just lived in the law all our life without the belief in Jesus, guess what? It's still void. But on the flip side, if you just believe, if you just have faith and you have no works, guess what? It's still void also. But jump down to verse 3 and what's that say? Do we then make void the law through faith? That's a really good question. God forbid. God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Yea, we establish the law. Because Jesus done died. He died. We're, we're justified through faith. That's one of the components because we're justified by not only faith but works also. And the scriptures also say that we're justified by grace. But what I'm telling you here is, do we make void the law through faith? No. 
Because people will come to the conclusion, oh, I have faith now. I don't have to do anything. Because Jesus died for our past sins. Well, he died for our sins in general is what is teached today in modern Christianity. They want to say he died for our past, present, and future sins. Which means that now I can have the mind state, I'm looking forward to make some sins. Nothing's stopping me. Because Jesus died, he's going to love me regardless, right? Well, it tells you right here, do we then make the void law through faith? God forbid. Because what is sin? Transgression of the law. It says, yeah, we established the law because this is the first thing that got us in trouble to begin with. We were breaking the law ignorantly. We didn't know no better, but the sins was racking up. But now we believe and he's put away the past sins and now it's our duty to establish this law, to bear fruit, walk according to his law. So, with, so even though we have faith, listen, we need the works also. But we're going to learn we're going to be judged by these works. So let's turn over to Titus chapter 1. Because not all works is good works, brothers and sisters. We have a lot of belief systems out here thinking, you know, I can do, I can worship the Lord my way. I, you can worship the Lord your way. And we'll all get to heaven. You know, that's three lies. Like, it's, it doesn't work that way. Because, you see, you can bear bad fruit, brothers and sisters. But first, oh, Titus chapter 1, pick it up. We're going to read one verse, one, verse 16. And get to go ahead and read. They profess that they know God. And people out here profess, they think they know God. They'll Jesus you to death. They'll be like, man, I know Jesus. Jesus knows my heart. You can't tell me nothing about Jesus. I don't want to hear it. He's my personal Savior. That's it. But, go ahead. But in works, they deny him. But in their works, they deny him. Just like when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. He says, why do you transgress the, well, why do you transgress the commandments of God for your traditions? Christmas, Easter, going to church on Sunday. Now, that tell you, you know, Jesus resurrected on a Sunday. That's why, that's why they go on Sunday. But that isn't true. But from that, you know, logic alone, it lets you know, it lets you know, that they know what the first day of the week is. Now the Lord told you to go to church on the seventh day. But they'll tell you, oh, no one knows when the real seventh day is. Well, according to your logic, you do know. You're just being defiant. And that's why it says, but in works, they deny him. Just because you think you know God, just because you think you know God, doesn't mean you really know him. Because you can say one thing, but your actions set here say otherwise. That's why it says, but in but in works, they deny him. Go ahead. Being abominable. And, and what else? And disobedient. So it says their works cause them to be abominable. It causes them to be disobedient. Think about it. Even in a diet tale, that tells you if you eat that swine, that is an abomination. But they'll, they, listen, you can't take it. I remember I worked with somebody, and he told me straight up, listen, because I, I don't eat pork. And he offered it to me. I said, no, nah, I don't eat that. He said, man, I couldn't be part of religion. Why well, can't eat pork? No, my mom, listen, that's everlasting life you're playing with right there. But you can't give it up just for the Lord. That's why it says in works, they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient. Because you're not obeying the word of the Lord. Go ahead. And unto every good work, reprobate. And unto every good work, reprobate. Now, you got people who've been in traditional Sunday church for 40 50 years. They can't let it go. This is the way that it has to be for them at this point. They won't let it go. So just because you are doing some form of work, it doesn't mean it's always going to be good, brothers and sisters. Let's turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Because these people, they're confident in their lives. Jesus is probably looking at, them, looking at them, shaking their heads at this point. But 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Uh, pick it up at verse 9. When you get there, you can go ahead and read. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? It says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? And that lets you know right off the bat, not everybody's getting in. So you really got to be considerate of what the criteria it is to get in. But it says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? What else? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators. Neither fornicators or what else? Nor idolaters. Nor idolaters. Nor adulterers. And you know what that is? It's a man trying to sleep with another man's wife. Go ahead. Nor effeminate. And listen. 
I did a class on this before, talking about, you know, the homosexuals. And they, they want to, and I made a post about it today, and they want to rail on me because I'm addressing homosexuality. Because people want to get bent up over it. You know, I got someone at my job, and, you know, he, he claims to have some understanding. But I introduced him to the Sabbath day, and he's like, and, and, he, and he bats an eye to it. But you see, another guy joins my job, and he's a homosexual, and he wants to rail on him. And in my mind, it's just like, listen, you don't even keep the, you don't even want to keep the Sabbath day. What's the difference between you and him? You're both being disobedient, ultimately. So you can't pick one and choose the other. We got to do this law entirely. But this is just a list of people who aren't getting in. If they don't convert, you got the fornicators, no idolaters, and that's all throughout church today. You 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 see it before you get in, it's at the top. Big old cross. Or the obelisk, whatever you want to call it. But it says no fornicators, no idolaters, no adulterers, nor effeminate. Go ahead. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Uh -huh. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom These of God. These people are not getting in. So if you fit one of these, listen, these thugs out here make a prayer before they before they go and do that drive-by. Listen, that ain't going to work for you. That sinner's prayer is not going to work for you either. Because you're still committing the wrong that the Lord died for you to repent from. That don't mean you go back to your own wicked ways. You're not exhibiting the right fruit in order for you to get into his kingdom. And you're going to be judged for all of this. Verse 11. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. And it says that, and such were some of you. Key word, were. Meaning at one point you may have been in these one of these categories, but you no longer fit that. So evidently, once you believe, your works have to show that you no longer live these lifestyles. Because the Lord, yeah, he'll die for your past sins. But listen, if you just keep racking them up, listen, you're going to be judged whether it was good or bad. And if you're bad out where you're good, it's not looking good for you. Let's turn over to Ecclesiastes, I mean, sorry, Psalms chapter 19. Because we realize not all work, not all fruits is good fruits. Not all works are good works. Well, let's look at what we can consider to be some good works. Psalm chapter 19 and verse 7. When you get there, go ahead and read, please. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. What does it do? Converting the soul. It converts the soul, brothers and sisters. So don't ever let anybody try to take the law away from you. Romans chapter 7 it says the law is it says the law is good, and the commandments holy, just, and good. Go ahead. The testimony of the Lord is sure. And then one thing we got to consider, if it's converting the soul, this is what's going to change. This is what you can look at in order to see where you are lacking at, brothers and sisters. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Just like it says, you know, the beginning of fear is, well, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A great understanding have all day that keep his commandments. So once you start going according to this law, listen, it can make the it can make the simple become wise. Go ahead. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Like I said, this is gonna bring you understanding, it's gonna give you wisdom. Because you're gonna operate contrary to the world. You know, the world as a whole is on its way to destruction, but you're on that narrow path to life. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is clean, Ooh. enduring forever. Right. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Now, people want to say, you can't judge me. But guess what? I don't, I don't make my own judgment. What I go according to is God's law. What judgment do I give you is God's judgment. So he's the one saying homosexual is an abomination. He's the one saying, listen, if you want to break the Sabbath, you're going to die. Because if you looked at the last scripture, it told you a lot of things like adultery, you're going to die for that. Being a homosexual, you're going to die for that. Guess what you're going to also die for? Breaking the Sabbath. Being disobedient to your parents. 
Listen, these things ain't being done away with. Don't let nobody tell you that the law is done away. Because these are your works, brothers and sisters. You need to honor your parents. You need to keep the Sabbath. You don't lie. You don't steal. You don't kill. All this is necessary, brothers and sisters. Jump down to verse 11. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. So you look at the law and listen, these are warnings. These are commands. This is something you need to go by. It's a way of life. So by this, you are warned and what else? And in keeping of them, there is great reward. There is great reward. That's why he told you in Matthew chapter 5. Mm -hmm. Whoso breaketh and teaches those to break the commands, listen, they're going to be least in the kingdom. And ultimately, that means you're not even getting it in. But guess what? If you keep the commandments and you teach others to do so, you'll be great in the kingdom of heaven. But right here it's saying, moreover by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Bible's always saying the same thing. Let's turn over to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We'll pick it up at verse 12. When you get there, go ahead and read, please. And further by thee, my son, be admonished. Of making many books, there is no end. And it says, and furthermore, by these, my son, be admonished. Of making many books, there is no one, no end. You know, you, you could go to Kroger. You can go to Walmart. You see all, all kinds of women devotionals. You know, personal, like, like guidelines. These are things that man wrote. Trying to get you closer to God. But it says right here, and further, by these, my son... Be admonished of making many books. There is no what there is no end. You can read all these, but listen, it's not gonna bring you no closer to God. Because here's the real book you need to go by. Right here, the Holy Bible, these 66 books right here. Because and it says right here, and of making many books, there is no end. What else? And much study is weariness of the flesh. And much study is the weariness of the flesh. Now we can get out of hand with all this. But guess what? Verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let us hear the whole conclusion. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What is that? Fear God. Love God. Fear God. Of course you need to fear God, but loving God means you're going to fear him. People want to tell you, you know, you don't need to fear God anymore. But it don't say this right here. It tells you quite the contrary. It tells you. Fear God and what else? And keep his commandments. Do away with his commandments. And keep his commandments. And it says fear God and keep his commandments. Now if you fear God, guess what? You're going to keep his commandments. And if you keep his commandments, it shows that you fear God. Why? Because you understand what, the, what God is capable of doing. It's not about dying. We become angels and, you know, we, we watch our loved ones from, you know, up in heaven. No, when we die, we go into the dirt. And listen, we're going to wake up and we're going to have an answer for everything we do. Verse 12, verse 14. For this is the whole duty of man. I mean, verse 14. For God shall bring. Oh, yeah, it says, for this is the whole duty of man. So this is what you're built to do. Verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And it says, for God shall bring every work into judgment. He ain't talking about your faith right here. He ain't talking about your grace right here. What he's talking about, he said he's going to bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. So you can't hide nothing from God. You got a numerable amount of angels recording everything taking place, whether it be good or evil. Let's turn over to our last scripture, Philippians chapter 2. We're going to read one verse here. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. When you get there, go ahead and read. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in much, not as in my presence only, but how much more in my absence. So he's talking to the Philippians here. Listen, I know you've been keeping the word when I've been here, but listen, it's, it's more important, it's more critical that you do it when I'm not here too. Listen, this is an enduring battle until the end. But what's it say? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It says, work out your own salvation. He didn't say just, you know, lay up under a, under a palm tree in a hammock, chilling, because salvation is right there. No. He didn't tell you, listen, I can break the commandments all I want, because Jesus done died for my sins. He nailed it to the cross. He nailed the feast days. 
He nailed the command. He nailed it all to the cross. No, he told you right here, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Because if you don't get in, brothers and sisters, living in that lake of fire for everlasting, listen, the fire is not going to be quenched. The worms die not. So you will be judged according to your works. I hope you got some understanding.